The tax benefits of owning investment property is one of its best features. So as investors, we should really be able to understand the deductions. And if we don't, well, my goodness, your CPA better understand. So many CPAs are not experts in real estate investing. So if you have a portfolio in real estate, make sure your CPA has one too and understands all the deductions you can get. One of the big ones is bonus depreciation, regular depreciation, and cost segregation studies that can help amplify all those deductions. I'm Kathy Fedke. Welcome to The Real Well Show. You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you like what you're hearing and you're getting some value, please give us a thumbs up. It really makes a difference. And also subscribe to our channel. This helps boost our rankings and helps us reach more people and we appreciate it. Today, I have a guest who is a new partner with Real Wealth, uh, a referral partner, helping our members get these cost segregation studies and help our members with tax planning because that is such an important element. Timing is everything. So Zach, welcome to The Real Wealth Show. I'm excited to talk to you about this topic. Hey, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. I mean, everybody loves a good tax benefit and this is a big one, cost seg. So let's talk about who it's appropriate for. I know, obviously, multifamily investors have been big into it. Uh, Single family, maybe, but who's the ideal person to take advantage of cost seg? Yeah, so the way I think of it at at a high level, there's really two filters in terms of who a cost segregation study could be relevant for. The first filter is, do you own investment property? (laughs) Investment property is something that... (laughs) you know, is primarily an investment. It's not your primary home. Uh, It's not even your secondary home. If you're spending, you know, more than two weeks out of the year somewhere, it might not qualify as an investment property. But the first filter is, do you own investment property? And the second filter, I generally tell folks to ask their accountant or get a free proposal from us and bring it to their accountant. The second filter is, do you have passive income that is being taxed? And if the answer to those two things is yes, you own investment property and you have passive income that you're paying taxes on, there's a really high probability, you know, 95% plus probability or something that a cost segregation study uh, would likely be valuable and, and save you uh, significant dollars on your on your tax returns. So break it down. What is a cost seg or cost segregation? Yeah, so a cost segregation study uh, is an engineering study that looks at the different components of a property and breaks them into shorter depreciation time spans, uh, which then flows through to your tax returns. So by default, if you own a residential property, uh, you can do what's called straight line depreciation. You take the property value excluding the land value, and you can depreciate 1 27th of that every year. That's your baseline. So there's already an incentive built in here that if you own investment property, you're already taking advantage of. A cost segregation study looks at the property and puts certain components of the property into shorter depreciable lives. Um, and as a result, instead of having you know one twenty seventh of the depreciation happen every year, you get a lot more of the preci- of the depreciation faster. Um, Additionally, getting a cost segregation study enables you to take advantage of bonus depreciation, uh, which I know you've talked about on the show before. I listened to the, uh, the episode with um, Brandon Hall from a few weeks ago. Uh, bonus depreciation um, really just kind of makes cost segregation studies even more valuable <laughs> because it allows you to front load even more of the depreciation into year one. There's a little bit of a sliding scale of how much bonus depreciation you get, depending on the year that you purchased the property. But think of it as just kind of like the icing on top of the cake of cost segregation studies and something that makes them even better. So you're adjusting your depreciation schedule. We're doing a study with an engineer to make sure we look at precisely what components to depreciate faster than the standard and then delivering a report to you that you can hand right over to your CPA or that you can, you know, take the right numbers out of certain parts of it and uh, put them into your tax returns. 
So somebody who had a really high income year might really want to look at, at uh, obviously having more and more write-offs and bigger ones in that year. Uh, but what if you didn't? What if it was just a normal year or you don't really need the tax benefits? Well, then you, it might not be the right time to get a cost segregation study. <laughs> you know, so we have right. a, another thing that we encounter a lot with our clients is um, let's say someone had uh, some type of financial event, you know, a high earning year, a big bonus, or maybe even they raised a little bit of money from family and friends and they put together a portfolio of rental properties. Um, you know, they have five single family homes or 10 single family homes. And when they look at their forecast of, you know, operating income from those properties, just to use small numbers, let's say they think they're going to get a hundred dollars of operating income and with straight line depreciation, they have $50 a year worth of uh, depreciation already that they can use to offset against that income. And then they look at other things like, you know, interest on mortgages or just operating expenses that they can also deduct against that income. And after those deductions, they have $20 left of income that they might pay taxes on. They could probably just do a cost segregation study on one property and wipe out that remaining $20 of income. Maybe they need to do two. There's a lot of scenarios where you don't necessarily need to do a cost segregation study on every property in your portfolio in order to achieve the objective of making sure you don't have passive income that's falling into that taxable uh, bucket. Um, and, you know, that's something that we very frequently help our clients kind of map out. We offer free proposals for you know every property and the proposal will tell you how much the study costs. And, and a conservative and optimistic range of what we think the depreciation benefit will be from completing the study. And we find that folks usually take that, look it over with their CPA, and then make a, you know, a super informed decision about whether now is the right time to do a study or how many studies to do if they're talking about a portfolio. The good news is you can do a study anytime. Uh, you can do it in year five of owning a property or year three or year one or year 10. Uh, so it's really just depending on your personal situation. So it really comes down to tax planning. And uh, so often people forget about that little piece. But let's say you're going to sell an asset, maybe a business or a, a property that's appreciated a, a lot and you don't really want to 1031 it. Um, this might be a great time to do the, the cost seg or you just made too much money. <laughs> you know, you just want, had had a huge sale or something, something happened in, in your business, maybe I guess stock options, you took those out or um, I mean, what, what kind of, I mean, give me some examples of clients you've worked with where timing the cost seg was really valuable. Yeah. Great question. So, I mean, we, we work with a lot of clients. We did uh, just over 2000 cost segregation studies last year uh, about, 55% of those studies were for single family homes and uh, the other uh, half was for commercial properties, everything ranging from self-storage facilities to RV parks to hotel development projects, uh, golf courses, industrial facilities and, and everything in between. Um, so, you know, I think timing the cost segregation study, frankly, is important for, for every single one of our clients. Um, and something that we always encourage them to, you know, if they have a CPA, have a conversation with them around the right time to uh, to do this. But in particular, it's 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 important when you have a portfolio. You know, I was talking to a client yesterday that has a portfolio of eight single family homes. They actually pooled a little bit of money from friends and family together to build this portfolio. They acquired all of the properties uh, over the last two years. And they had a conversation with their CPA and he said, it looks like because of the property's performance, you're going to be paying taxes uh, on some of this passive income that you've generated. <laughs> and so uh, one of the things you should look at is a cost segregation study to see if we can wipe that out. Now, I don't know how deep we want to get into some of the nuance here, but I've been talking from a passive income point of view, um, you know, meaning rental properties or other forms of passive income that folks might uh, have. There are also ways to use cost segregation studies to offset your active income, uh, which is W-2 income. And there's two primary uh, ways that you can take advantage of <clears throat> using a cost segregation study against active income. One is real estate professional status. 
uh, which I which I think you might be familiar with from uh, from listening to some of the earlier podcasts. <laughs> um, and the second is what's generally referred to as the short term rental loophole. Those are I think of those as like, you know, cost seg 201 instead of 101. And I'm happy to talk about them. But we also have a lot of clients who are, you know, either real estate professionals or taking advantage of the short term rental loophole. And as a result, they are uh, able to deduct the depreciation from the cost segregation study against forms of active income as well. Yeah, let's talk about the that short term rental loophole, because that's that's pretty exciting. Like, first of all, what kinds of deductions do you get from a short term rental through cost seg? Uh, well, from cost segregation, the deductions are always, you know, it's a, it's a depreciation uh, based deduction. Um, using the short short term rental loophole is basically saying you're taking advantage of the way the tax code is written to use that depreciation against active income, whereas by default, you would use the depreciation against passive income. So a, a typical profile of someone that we see doing a strategy like this would be somebody who lives in New York or California, high tax states. They have you know, uh, a good job at a technology company or there's some type of professional that has a significant amount of W-2 income. And they're paying, you know, in some cases, close to a 50 percent tax rate on that uh, W-2 income. And what they do is they buy a short-term rental and operate it themselves. You know, they're, they're not hiring a property manager. They're um, being very careful to meet the qualifications that the IRS has laid out to take advantage of this short-term rental loophole, um, which I think of really simply as being, you need to be the manager of the property and the primary person doing work on the property. Um, and if you check those boxes and you keep good records, then you should, you know, in partnership with your CPA, qualify to use the depreciation from a cost segregation study on the property against active income. With bonus depreciation, can you explain the difference between cost seg and bonus depreciation and how they might work together or how they're different? Sure, absolutely. So bonus depreciation, you can think of as like an enhancer to a cost segregation study. Um, so, you know, bonus depreciation basically says that you can take some portion of property that had a depreciable life of, you know, five years or seven years, and you can put it all into year one. Uh, currently, bonus depreciation is in the process of being phased out. Uh, the, the level of bonus depreciation kind of ebbs and flows historically. It was like 50% for a long time, and it's been zero at times. Uh, most recently, it, it was at 100% from 2017 through uh, 2022. And then in 2023, it went from 100% down to 80. Currently, it's at 60%, and it'll be at zero in 2027 if nothing changes. But there's a lot of uh, potential you know, between bills and, and negotiations that politicians are doing that it could get put back at 100 percent sometime soon. You know, time will tell. Uh, but basically, bonus depreciation enhances the value of a cost segregation study by taking more of the value from properties that have shorter depreciable lives and putting it into year one. It's, and it's a formulaic thing. So without bonus depreciation, you might see using ballpark numbers, five to 20% of the value of a, of a property be depreciable in year one with, with a cost segregation study. With bonus depreciation, that percentage that you can depreciate in year one can go as high as 40, 50, 60% of the property value excluding land. So it's kind of, I think of it as, a, as an amplifier, as a kicker, to a cost segregation study that, that makes it even better. And the great news about bonus depreciation is that it applies based on the year that you purchased the property and placed it into service. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, bonus depreciation is at 60%, you know, I don't really like that, but you purchased a property and placed it into service in 2021, that property is gonna be eligible for 100% bonus depreciation based on when you purchased it and placed it into service. 
So if you missed that opportunity, didn't do it, then you can still do it today. Yeah, you didn't yeah. miss it. You didn't miss it. Okay, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so I, I've, I've watched a lot of people really get excited about the bonus depreciation and uh, on, let's say, a multifamily property where they're taking all that bonus depreciation in one year, but then the plan is to sell the property in three to four years. Isn't there a recapture on that? So does it really benefit them? Yeah, there, there certainly uh, there certainly is. So um, a lot of our clients, uh, when they're selling properties, are doing a 1031 exchange. Um mm-hmm. But for the purposes of answering your question, let's assume there's no 1031 exchange. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm specifically talking about syndication. So you yeah. you invest passively, put $100,000 into an apartment building syndication to get the bonus depreciation. So many people did this when it was 100% depreciation. So they could take all those tax benefits in that year one. But then the business plan was to sell the property in three to five years and then you kind of have to pay all that back, right? Because you can't really 1031 out of a, out of a uh, syndication. Yeah. You don't, I wouldn't necessarily say you have to pay all of it back. Um, the way I think of it is it's, it's kind of like an interest-free loan from the government. So let's okay. say in that scenario, mm-hmm. in your multifamily syndication, based on your financial profile, you were um, going to have to pay taxes on $100 of income. But you got this bonus depreciation out of the syndication uh, that that netted against that hundred dollars. So you didn't have to pay taxes on the hundred dollars. The worst case scenario you could possibly be in with recapture is having to pay taxes on the hundred. That wouldn't actually be the scenario because the property was held for a few years, so it's not getting recaptured entirely. And there's a you know there's a little bit of complex math that goes into this and like even more different property types for the purposes of calculating recapture. But nevertheless, I think a misconception that people might have about recapture is that you could end up paying more taxes than if you wouldn't, if you would have just not done a study and taken any bonus depreciation in the first place. That's not true. The maximum amount of tax you might have to pay down the road if you don't 1031 and you're subject to recapture is capped at the amount of tax that you didn't pay by taking mm-hmm. advantage of the of the study in the first place. And, and in okay. fact, it'll be lower than that amount because you get to compare it to uh, the depreciation that you would have been able to take without doing the cost seg study. And again, there's some complicated math that goes into it. But think of the benefit of a cost segregation study as being an interest free loan from the government. The concept is that you're managing your tax liabilities on a different timetable. You're not making your tax liabilities go away completely. The only thing that I know of that can do that is, is passing away and handing your assets <laughs> Just down. Just die. <laughs> then, it's a, then it's great for everyone, your heirs. I mean, that is a tax strategy, by the way. But, um, you know, the real estate, when it gets passed down to your heirs, they, you know, they benefit from a step up in basis. So... Mm-hmm. One strategy that I've heard our clients talk about um, is, you know, uh, buy, cost, seg, 1031, die. Die. Yeah. And in theory, <laughs> then you're actually in a, I've avoided the tax liability completely world, but you're dead. So, I mean. <laughs> so your kids benefit, but you know, yeah. if it, if it, if you're old and that's a possibility, or if you're going to, I don't know, jump off a building and try to, uh, try to do the fly suit, you know, <laughs> and, uh, maybe just have that backup plan. Uh, so if, if you do this deal where you're basically flipping apartments or you're planning on selling an asset that you took the uh, bonus depreciation and the cost seg on, is there also a tax strategy for that on the year that you have to pay that recapture? You might buy something else like a short term rental or something to offset that? Sure. I mean, like in, in general, our, our clients are in kind of the snowball rolling down the hill wealth building <laughs> effect with their real estate. And, um, you know, if you're selling one property uh, and there's some recapture there, you could absolutely use depreciation from another property to offset the recapture. Um, 
And, you know, as a portfolio builds, the net operating income can, you know, increase significantly over time. So sometimes folks who aren't even selling existing properties find a motivation to buy a new one because the the income snowball from their existing properties you know has outpaced the depreciation that they've taken to date and so they buy a, a new property so that they can have more depreciation just to use against the cash flow from uh their existing portfolio but uh we see a, lo- a lot of our clients do 1031s when they when they sell a property um there's a firm 1031 specialists who i think is also uh, a, a partner of real wealth that we have a ton of mutual clients with and think very highly of. So okay. another area to educate yourself on in the tax optimization world of real estate investing. Awesome. Yeah. And all you have to do to get uh, connected with these resources is go to realwealth.com, click on the invest tab, and you'll see this whole drop down of investor resources to amazing companies that specialize in working with real estate investors. Uh, so, so many, so many good ones. Um, including you guys here, you'll be listed there. Uh, so finally, with a cost seg, what's basically the cost to the investor to do it? Let's just say on a uh, on a, pro- on a single family property that they bought, or or a duplex. What kind of costs are they looking at, and what is being cost segregated in that property? Sure. So we actually have two different. I think of them as uh, delivery methods for a cost segregation study. One, which we call our rapid report. The pricing starts at $895. Um, The other, which we call a fully engineered report for a single family home, pricing starts at $2,000. And, you know, in general, single family homes or duplexes or triplexes are all going to be in the $2,000 to $2,500 range for a fully engineered study. What's the difference between a fully engineered study and a rapid report? The output is the same. You know, the net benefit that you're going to get is is essentially the exact same. The difference is in how the work to produce the report is conducted. So for our rapid report product, we find that that's relevant to folks who are more in the do-it-yourself category. So, you know, they, they know what type of material the floors and cabinets and countertops and you know, roof is, and they know roughly how many square feet of the different types of flooring that they have. And they're willing to take the time to input that information into our cost segs platform. For the fully engineered study, we're doing, you know, most of the time a virtual site visit, but we can also do them in person. But one of our engineers is getting a video tour of the property, either from the property manager or the owner or a cleaning person. And they're using that video walkthrough of the property to then gather all of the information that we need to complete the cost segregation study. Um, And it's looking at, you know, all of the components of the, of the property that, uh, you know, are not structural. So take out the foundation and, you know, other core components like that, that actually hold the structure together and and will always be there if the structures there and think of everything else, windows, doors, cabinets, flooring, (laughs) All of these other things have, you know, shorter depreciable lives. And what the cost segregation study does is it looks at those, it identifies what they're made of, you know, matches that with the guidelines from what the depreciable life should be, and then puts it all into a a, a nice, uh, easily accessible report with a different depreciation schedule that you can then hand over to your CPA. And hopefully your CPA is a good one and understands this. So got to make sure you've got a CPA who understands real estate investing and cost seg. And if you don't, find one on the, in the Real Wealth uh, Resources Center. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Zach, well, we're excited to uh, have you as a new partner for Real Wealth. And again, people can find out more about your company by going to Real Wealth show.com click on the invest tab and you'll see the drop down for resources thank you Uh, so much for having me kathy it was great to be here thank you so much for being here and thank you for joining me here on the real wealth show if you'd like to find out more about cost seg getting referrals to great cpas or property teams across the country that have worked with us for decades uh some are newer but some have been with us for a long time with rave reviews 
They were able to find our members' investment property with property management in place to make for a turnkey investment for busy professionals. You can have access to one of our investment counselors. They are also real estate investors who invest in these same markets with these same teams. And they also speak with our over 77,000 members at Real Wealth. Uh, they know which teams are really serving people well. So you can find out more at realwealthshow.com. Thanks for joining me here. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.